In this video, you'll learn to create AI videos and scripts in a completely automated way by using one of the leading video AI platforms called InVideo. The content you're about to see is taken from a larger paid course on this topic, but you don't need to buy that course because all the important videos of that course is contained in this video that you can get for free. Of course, if you'd like to sign up for InVideo AI, I have the affiliate link and the coupon to get more value and more minutes of video created for the same price in the description of this video. So check the description of this video for the discount coupon code and my affiliate link. And without further ado, let's actually begin going over this software. In this video, I want to explain to you how InVideo works and what you should expect from the end result. And what I'll play for you now is an example of a video that it creates. It's a video that I already made. So let's play it from the very, very beginning and I'll turn on the volume as well. Have you ever wondered why some people or teams bounce back stronger from adversity while others crumble? So let's pause here for a second and let's go over what you see. You see captions that are auto-generated for you. You see a script that's auto-generated for you. You hear a voice that surprisingly sounds like my voice, even though I didn't talk into this. And what you also see throughout this video is different stock footage. This is an image and a video you see. This is all stock footage that exists. This is stock footage that is not made by AI. What AI does here is it searches existing stock footage libraries for ideal images for the script and places them over the script that it creates. So it creates the script or you can give it a script. Either way is fine. And then it creates the captions, creates the audio of the voice from the script, and it uses a lot of stock photography and stock video. And the stock video is what's called B-roll video. If you're not familiar with that term, B-roll is something that's exactly this. It plays over whatever the scene should be. So if you're talking about giraffes in your video and you say giraffes are a beautiful animal and giraffes have this and this and this and they grow here and, and they live here and this is what they eat, what the B-roll would do is show the giraffes. And when you say this is what the giraffes would eat, they would show the giraffes eating. That's just B-roll footage. It's very commonly used in many videos. It enhances the video because it makes the videos more visual. Here, the B-roll is taken from stock footage photography sites and stock video sites. And once you use NVIDIA AI, don't worry, you have all the rights to it. So you don't have to worry about rights or anything else like that. This is all fine for you to use. But you see, as I scroll through the video, I muted for a while the audio, but you'll see the stock photography here. It's kind of using different scenes that make sense for the video. And that's what you get. So you don't get this like crazy generative AI where like AI creates a new world and maybe a dog that looks like a cat or whatever you tell it. It doesn't do that. So this is more for like professional videos, explainer videos, not super imaginative new different world kind of videos that you sometimes see really flashy examples of on social media, but those aren't as useful for like teaching or showing something or explaining. So this is a great genre for explaining or teaching something or providing some information. So if that's what you need, this AI platform is exactly perfect for you. In this video, I want to go over the pricing for InVideo AI so that you know approximately what you're getting for which price, what you're getting for free, and which price points are applicable to which use cases. So let's click on pricing. And what you'll see is that there is a free plan and you get like 10 minutes of AI generation of video per week, which is not bad. There are some features you don't get, like you don't get a voice clone of your own voice. So you can use just the pre-made voices that they have available. And you see this little thing X on iStock. That means that for the video that gets created, you'll end up with a watermark on the video. And the watermark will come from whichever company owns the rights to those videos. The videos I'm referring to are those B-roll videos or that stock footage that they place over the video. So you basically will just end up with videos you can have, but those videos will have 
a watermark on them. It's not ideal to have a watermark, but you can still use those videos for presentations you might want to make. You can even put it on YouTube. It may or may not get demonetized, I don't know, but essentially it's still usable. But in any case, the free option is the best option to try it out to see if you want the service. So in the beginning, what I would recommend is using the free version, seeing if the videos that it makes for you are going to be good for you for your needs. And if they are, probably you want to invest at least in the plus because the most important feature of it is that the watermark gets removed and you're going to be able to use it for professional use. Like if you want to make a serious YouTube channel or online courses or any kind of professional videos, it would just look so bad if you have a watermark on it. So for professional use, once you're satisfied with the free version, the plus is what you want to end up with because you'll be able to export videos that you can use that it doesn't even appear like it was made by AI. Now, what is the difference between the plus and the max? It's the same content you would create, but in, on the plus you're getting 15 minutes a month of AI generation versus on the max you get 200 minutes. Like 200 minutes is like a full online course or a lot of YouTube videos that are relatively short. So here you're not gonna have to worry about the volume. Whereas 15 minutes a month can be a little bit limiting. Like if you wanna make a one hour course, it has to take you two months because you can't really go over the 15 minute limit. And what if you don't like some videos and you can't edit it, you wanna make completely different videos, well then you really will need more than the 15 minutes a month. So that's the difference in pricing. For a price that's from $20 to $48 a month, you basically get four times the amount of video that you can make. Now, I am aware of a coupon code. So let's say I want to get the plus. So I click on get plus. And in my case, it will say, got a subscription already, want to upgrade here at the accounts page. So I'll go to my accounts page because I already do have an account. So here's this free account that I'm on. What I'm gonna click on is upgrade. And under upgrade, I have this similar kind of a screen. And I'll just click on get plus from here. If you have the free account, this is where you would do it. And you would enter your billing information, like I will do here, address, all that. In my case, it's grayed out, but in your case, you just fill it out and click add address. And then here on this payment area, they say, have a coupon? Yes, we do. And whatever price they give you, I am aware of a coupon code, try 50. And you would apply that and you see what it does? coupon applied, 50 AI minutes added. So if you use this coupon, whatever account you get, instead of 50 minutes a month on this, you'll be able to get 100 minutes a month. And I believe if you change the plan and go for the expensive, they still give you the 50 extra minutes of video creation. So this is basically just how you get more out of the service. And then you would go ahead and purchase the plan, obviously, the last thing to keep in mind is this toggle right here. If you pay monthly, you'll be paying more. But if you get a year's worth, you get 20% off. And of course, you manage that according to what makes sense for you. If you're not sure about it, it's better to just go month to month. But if you try one month, another month, and you see, oh, I really need the service and I need more minutes and I'm going to be using it all the time and I'm already using it all the time, it's working for me, then you pretty much want to upgrade and switch to just pay for it annually so that you get the 20% off without the extra risk. So that's the pricing and hopefully now it's clear what you get for whichever price and how to use the code to get yourself more minutes. Again, that code is try 50, like it's right here. Try and the 50 is five zero numbers, no spaces. Once you've made your account, you're ready to begin creating your AI videos so now let's actually start doing that. When you're in your dashboard, what you'll see is maybe on the top right, a little button that says create a video or a button here that says create an AI video. So let's do that. We'll click on create AI video and we need to give it a prompt. This is basically asking us what kind of a video you wanna make. Now you can do a freestyle prompt, like you can ask it, hey, make me a video about the benefits of recycling or a video about any topic, or you can give it a much more detailed prompt and the more detailed prompt you give it, the more accurately it will create what you actually have in mind. 
but you should give it some parameters. Like there's probably a video duration that you want to ask it for because you maybe don't want a random length video. You maybe want specifically a five minute video, or you maybe want the narrator's voice to be male or female, or maybe you want some points to be covered. So that's what you would write here to make your instructions more precise. And to help you, you see on the bottom here, there are these workflows. These are things that will make it easier for you to give it the right kinds of directions. For example, let's click on the workflow for the YouTube Explainer video. You see, they give you all these forms and these forms are going to actually turn into instructions for AI on what exactly to create. So let's see, create a video duration. You see, we're going to make a, let's say a four minute video. Then they ask for the topic on, in this field. I asked it to make a video on the need for recycling plastic and how people can use alternatives to plastic. And the reason I asked for that topic is because I know a lot about the subject matter. So I'll be able to evaluate the video deeply. And it's also something that everyone in the world can understand and relate to. Now the next field asks for optional creative directions. This is whether you want it to be a little bit funny, a little bit serious, friendly, or what's the tone and mood and feel. So I'll say, use research when possible. You can choose background music, like dark and haunting, or maybe inspirational. Under settings, use any voice, male, female, or my voice. To create a my voice, I have to give it a little recording of my voice. It takes a very short time, and then it will actually make the video in my voice. Now, the video won't show me, but it will use my voice in the background. For now, let's use a ma male, and let's say clear American voice. For now, let's do that, and later I'll show you how to give it your own voice so that it makes the videos with your voice. Add subtitles. For now, we don't need it. Let's say no. Then the watermark text. That's if you have the free account. So I'm just going to say plastics. And then number four, I stock normally. Just leave that default and click continue. And suddenly you see it created all these instructions for the AI so that the instructions are detailed in the way it needs. So usually what you would do is read over them and add any other details that maybe aren't covered. But for now, let's just click on generate a video. Then it thought for a little bit, and you see it created a title for us, Plastic, the Unseen Enemy and How to Defeat It. Cool. And it's going to ask us a few questions to help direct it in how to make the video. So the audience, is it for environmentalists, general public, policymakers? It would be actually fascinating to see how it would look for the policymakers. So let's actually click that. That's actually a hard video to make because that has to be quite advanced. Look and feel, professional, platform, YouTube. And let's click continue. And now it's going to start creating the video. And this takes about a few minutes. So I'll fast forward this video to when the video creation is complete. And so here we are, the video is complete. This is the preview. What you would do is watch this video. And you see here, give me a command to edit the video. So let's actually watch the video together to see if we like it or love it or not really. Have you ever pondered about the repercussions of our massive plastic consumption on our environment? Every year we produce and discard a mind-boggling 300 million tons of plastic. That's equivalent to the weight of the entire human population every single year. What's worse, plastic isn't biodegradable. Instead, it breaks down into tiny particles called microplastics, lingering in our environment for hundreds, even thousands of years. Our oceans bear the brunt of this onslaught. More than 8 million tons of plastic end up in our seas annually, causing devastating effects on marine life. It's estimated that by 2050 there could be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Our lands don't fare any better. Plastic waste chokes our landfills, leaches harmful chemicals into the soil, and disrupts ecosystems. These aren't just abstract numbers. They're the reality of our relationship with plastic, backed by research from leading environmental organizations worldwide. The numbers are staggering, aren't they? But there's more to this story. You might think, I recycle, so I'm part of the solution. But is recycling enough? Let's be frank. 
Even though recycling is a step in the right direction, it's not the end-all solution to our plastic problem. Research shows not all plastic can be recycled. In fact, a significant chunk of the plastic we use daily ends up in landfills. And even when plastic is recycled, it's not as squeaky clean an operation as we'd like. The process of recycling plastic is energy intensive. It requires high temperatures, which means burning fossil fuels, contributing to air pollution and climate change. Moreover, the quality of plastic degrades each time it's recycled, meaning it can't be recycled indefinitely. So, while recycling may feel like a quick fix, it's a band-aid solution on a bullet wound. It's a process fraught with limitations and environmental costs. Recycling, it seems, is not the silver bullet we hoped for. If recycling is not the answer, then what is, you may. So I'll pause here. Just because this video is a four minute video, we don't necessarily want to watch the whole thing. But what I will point out is it's a great video. It uses a lot of B-roll footage, which is footage that you see different clips that reinforce what the narrator is saying at the right moments. And if I had to do that myself manually, I would have to go and search different libraries of stock images to find the appropriate images. This would take minutes for every image. And the whole video like that would take like an hour or more to create. Not to mention it's using subtitles nicely and the script is very precise and the speaker is very well spoken. And the points made are very good. They're very on point. And to give you an idea of how good the video is, recently I myself made a video on this topic. And I have to be honest that in my own video on this topic that I made previously, I actually forgot to make one of the points that this video is making. Although most of the points that I made are actually made in this video, there's one thing that I left out that this video didn't. So this is better than I made. And I made mine after a lot of research, like years of research and extra intense research leading up to the video and then creating the video, which took a long time. And this took just a couple of clicks here and there and then waiting a little couple of minutes. So this is already pretty amazing. And in coming videos, let's explore this tool further and see what else it can do. Now let's continue working with the video we made in the previous video and let's explore what we can do. If you don't like any part of the video, you can edit the video. So there's an edit button. So you can edit any part of the script. If you don't like something that is said in the video, you can click this button here, edit script, and you can literally just edit this. So if recycling is not the answer, I can say is not the best answer. Just as an example, I'll say apply changes and that's going to be my script and it's going to generate the script. And it takes a little bit of time to work in the background and it edits the script. Now, in addition to the script, you can edit the media as well. So for example, all these, what's called B-roll, the footage that's playing as the person is talking, let's say there's something that's too negative or this one looks a little bit too sad or this one looks a little bit too sad. What you can do is click on these three dots and maybe say, okay, like, instead of 10 seconds, five seconds on the screen. So there will be less of that. Or you can upload your own media. Let's say you want to use your own B-roll footage. You can do that. Usually people don't do that because there's so much existing B-roll footage already that NVIDIA gets from these other services like CC Story, Blocks, iStock. This is just stock footage that it uses. And if you don't want to upload it, you can search for media that you want. So I'll search for plastic. And in a few seconds, I'm presented with all this footage. Now, of course, you would have to go and look at it, which is time consuming, which this tool really saves you from having to do all that. In any case, what you can do is just apply changes and regenerate. In my case, I don't want to do that. I'm going to discard. And what I want to do is give a command to edit the video. Like in my case, what I found that I didn't like love love is there were moments where there was captions on the screen, but the captions were in this kind of very uninteresting font and background like here. It's just white. So what I might say is, can you make the captions and the background image more fun and engaging? Although I believe the reason it's like that is because I asked it to make the video professional because it is professional. It's clear and it's easy to read. 
and there are not too many bells and whistles. But essentially, you could make this kind of a request and it would edit the video. And when you're done with it, you can say export and then you can say export video. It will ask you for a few details like, do you want the stock watermarks? Do you want no watermarks? This is if you have the paid account. You see, requires an upgrade to the paid plan. Select in video AI branding. Again, this requires the paid plan. So we'll say normal and stock watermarks. And then we can continue and it's going to give us our video. And then you click continue. It's going to work a little bit. As you see here, it says rendering. 21% it's working. And when it's done working, see there's a button download and you can download it to your computer. And it's also gonna be in your dashboard. So if I go to my home, see in the history, I have this video so I can always go back to it and I can edit it, etc. So now you see in just minutes, you can create and edit a pretty awesome video and get it to be just how you like it and how you need it with AI without actually recording or scripting or doing any kind of manual editing. So to give you a comparison, if I was to create a video like this, which I did create a similar video like this, including research, including preparation and scripting and everything, mine took a couple of hours to make while this video took a few minutes to make and mine still didn't come out as good because I did forget to make one interesting point that this video made and the footage that this video uses helps to make this video engaging and flow better. Whereas the footage that I showed on my screen had more captions on it and my video was less visual in the end. So essentially that's how you create and edit a video that you can use for your needs immediately, provided that of course you're able to get the paid account so you can get rid of the watermark. Now I'm going to show you a feature of InVideo that's incredibly cool that will help to make your videos feel more realistic to your audience because you're going to be able to use your voice. In other words, you're going to be able to get InVideo to create videos with your voice over it without you speaking. And just keep in mind, this is one of the paid and premium features of InVideo. Here's how to do it. So on the left side, You'll come under plugins and you'll go to voices and you'll say add voice. And I'm going to add my voice. Before I do that, there are some instructions. Let's read it together. The first instruction is submit a recording of at least 30 seconds. The second instruction is in that recording that you're going to submit, you have to add this phrase. I give in video AI permission to use my voice in this workspace. That's just obviously for kind of legal reasons. Then the third instruction is pause between sentences like you normally would. So don't ramble on, give it a good sample in other words. And the fourth suggestion is use high quality equipment. I'm using the microphone that I'm usually using to record videos now. So what I'll do is I'll just upload a video of my audio already. So now I'm gonna upload a file that I had prepared, just an MP3 file. Then it processes the file and it gives me these options. I just have to agree to this like this is my voice and I have the rights to it. Yes, this voice sample includes the permission to clone. Yes, voice sample includes natural pauses and filler words. Yes, this was recorded using high quality equipment. Yes, my sample looks good. We click that and we wait. And I'm gonna process it for a while and I'm gonna fast forward to the moment when it's done. It took about 15 or 20 seconds and it gives me this option to click done and I'll click that done. Then it's gonna show me that it's processing this here. So I'm also going to just wait until that's done processing. And I'll fast forward this video to the moment when it's done processing. It took about a minute and it changed from processing to completed. And so now I can use it. And the name is going to be the excited friendly voice. And now that we've set this up in the next video, let's actually create a video with my voice in it. And just keep in mind that having the AI using a specific person's voice, like your voice, that's a premium feature in this software. That's just something to keep in mind. Now that in the previous video, we gave a sample of my personal voice to InVideo, which is this sample voice right here, excited friendly voice, which we have saved. Let's ask it to create a video and have it mimic my voice. So we're going to say, create new, and I'm gonna give it a topic. Here's what I'm asking it. 
create a video that gives the general definition of resilience. Resilience as in that personal development kind of a skill that you want to be a resilient kind of a person. And then define what it means for a team at work to be resilient because resilience at work, that's a big topic as well. So let's click on generate a video and let's see what it comes up with. Then it starts to analyze the request, does some processing, and I'll forward this video to when it's done. So once it analyzed everything, it asks me for some detail, like what's my audience? In this case, let's say team leaders, that's a good audience, look and feel professional, that's very good. And platform, let's say YouTube, we're gonna say continue. Then it's doing some more work. And I'll fast forward to when this work is done. And then a couple of minutes later, the video is created and we can listen. So in this video, what we're watching for is let's listen to the voice of the presenter. See, now I'm speaking with my voice. I'm literally speaking. When I click play here, that's going to be the AI mimicking my voice. See if it sounds similar. Have you ever wondered why some people or teams bounce back stronger from adversity while others crumble? This phenomenon, friends, is called resilience. It's the ability to adapt well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, or even significant sources of stress. Consider the bamboo tree. It bends under the pressure of a storm only to spring back once the storm passes. Just like the bamboo, uh, resilient people and teams bend but do not break under pressure. Think about Thomas Edison, the great inventor. He failed thousands of times before he finally invented the electric light bulb. He, when asked about his failures, he famously said, So it kind of sounds like me, huh? Little scary. <laughs> At times, it used some filler words that I would actually cut out of my video on purpose. Like if I used those filler words, it might, I don't know if you noticed, but there were some moments where I said something like, um, or waited too long. So maybe it tried to mimic me a little bit too much in order to try to make it realistic. And it kind of added some of my speech defects that when I would edit a video, I would try to get those defects out. But in any case, I think in terms of matching my accent, which is a super weird accent, so that's a hard thing to match. It did that. It matched my um, voice texture. So yeah, it was like listening to myself. So the AI did great. And so if you have a YouTube channel where in the past you had to present and you have to talk, well, in this case, you see it creates the scenes that you don't appear in the video, but it sounds like you. So if you want to create content without actually creating the content and having your audience still think that it's you creating it, you can totally do that. Of course, in YouTube, you have to disclose to YouTube whether the content was made by AI. So that's a different story. But if you're using this on any other social media, you can totally do that. And people will think, hey, you did it. Of course, it's good to be honest with your audience, but we're not talking about ethics here. We're just talking about the ability of AI to mimic voice and it did it really well. In this video, let's do something really cool. Let's use ChatGPT to create a video script for us that's really insightful about some topic that's a little bit complex. And then let's give that script to InVideo AI to create a video right out of that script so that we can control what script it uses instead of having to edit the video, and control the script that's already created by InVideo AI. This way we kind of have more control and are more organized from the beginning so that we know the video is gonna come out more like how we need it. So let's say you have this requirement for a video. Here's what I asked ChatGPT. I said, create a script for a video about this topic and I gave it a topic. Specific roles managers play in fostering resilience among team members. That's our topic. It's supposed to create a script outlining the specific roles managers play in fostering resilience among team members. And as you can see, here's the answer from ChatGPT with many different elements. It even created a good video title, which we didn't even ask for, but thank you for doing that, going the extra mile for us. Then it also goes the extra mile in another way of actually directing what the opening shot should look like. 
and then sometimes it says cut to a shot of a manager having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a team member. This is instructions for the video creator. So hopefully in video AI can do something like that. We'll test it in a second. And then it has the script narrator. In today's fast paced dynamic work environment, resilience has become a crucial skill, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you don't want to just paste this blindly into NVIDIA AI. You want to read it and see if this script makes sense for you. If it doesn't, you have two options. You can ask ChatGPT to augment some things that it, you didn't like in its script so that the script can come out better. Or you can just take this script and edit details by hand because 90% of it is written already by ChatGPT. And so your edits have to be little. But do not paste this blindly into in video AI, because what if there are some things that this says that's a little bit outside your requirements? So you're gonna get a video that's not exactly what you wanted. So you wanna go through the video. Would you be satisfied with a video that is supposed to discuss the specific roles managers play in fostering resilience? And then the video is gonna talk about the manager being an active listener, the manager acting as a coach and mentor, the manager acting as a team builder, the manager acting as a visionary leader. And so what you would ask yourself is, is this missing any great points or are these points satisfactory and helpful? So let's say in the end, you're good with it. So what we're going to do is copy all this and we're going to go to InVideo AI and we're gonna take, and we're gonna use one of my voices here that I made for myself, Alex's voice, and I'm gonna say, use that one. And I'm going to, paste this entire script right into here. And on top, I'm going to say, create a video with the following script and video instructions. What you can also do is on the bottom here, you see script to video. So there's already a workflow for this. So script to video, and it's going to give me the option, create a video, let's say YouTube video. So I pasted that script right into here for background music. Let's choose it. Inspirational. Use any of the settings. Yes, use the Alex's voice and then continue. Then create a video. So basically just did everything here. Like we pasted the text here like we did originally, but it did it for us anyway. Now we can click on create video and it's going to think for a little while. And I'll fast forward to the moment when it prompts me next things. After a little while, it asks me for some detail audience, let's say leaders look and feel professional platform, let's say YouTube, continue. And it's gonna start creating our video. It's gonna take a few minutes here. So I'm gonna fast forward to the moment when it's done. So now that the video is complete, let's see how it came out. So I'm just gonna press play here. In today's fast paced and dynamic work environments, resilience has become a crucial skill for both individuals and teams to navigate challenges and thrive. But who plays a key role in fostering resilience among team members? The answer lies with managers. Managers play several specific roles in cultivating resilience within their teams. Let's explore some of these roles. Firstly, managers serve as active listeners. They, they create a safe space for team members to express concerns, share successes, and discuss challenges openly. By actively listening without judgment, managers validate their team members' experiences and emotions. So the video is fine. The concern is with this new voice that I gave it, I tried to create a better voice of myself, a more accurate, more interesting sounding version, but it gave me this weird intonation that I don't actually have. So before you can create videos, you have to go through a few iterations of getting your voice right and giving it a few samples so that it finally uses the right voice sample across all the future videos because I already showed you how to do that in this course. I'm not gonna show you again and again and again, but but behind the scenes, what I'll do is I'll go through a few samples of giving it a sample audio of myself, having it create a video, listening to the video, making sure it really sounds like me in a good way, because it can sound like me in a bad way, like saying, um, and making pauses at the wrong times, make sure it creates a good version of your voice and not just voice, but tonality, etc. And then you can make great videos with that by using ChatGPT to create scripts in just a few seconds, and then using InVideo AI to create videos with that voice. 
but don't rush into things and don't rush into posting your videos before you get your audio sample right because your audience will just think, well, they don't sound like that. Something is going on here that's wrong. But if my voice was picked up the right way, what I wanted to show you in this video and what actually happened in this video is that you can create a script with ChatGPT, proofread it on your own, don't post it blindly, and then paste it into NVIDIA AI, and it literally tells NVIDIA AI what scenes to use, what to say, and ChatGPT also provides the insights also. So ideally, once you get your audio right, you can just use this, export the video, and upload it wherever you need, essentially by having AI do pretty much all the work. In this video, I wanna show you how to debug your voice sample that you give it so that in video creates a good representation of how you actually speak because I'm gonna play you what in video did with my voice in the latest video that I used. And we're gonna zero in on the detail of my voice and I'm gonna help you hear how it doesn't sound quite right. And then we're gonna debug that in the sample I gave it. So let's listen. Work environments, resilience has become a crucial... Do you hear how it kind of says resilience? It doesn't say resilience and it's not well announced. Let's listen to that little defect in my speech here as the video goes on. For both individuals and teams... It's like individuals... Right, it, g it gave me this little speech defect. Teams ...to navigate challenges and thrive. To navigate challenges and thrive. Like, I don't talk like that. But who plays a key role? Who plays a key role, right? That's, some, that's somebody else's accent. So if that happens to you, what you have to do is go into your recording sample that you gave it. So we'll do that together now. This is my audio editing area where I created the sample. Here's the sample. I gave it like random text. Let's listen to it. I give in video AI the permission to use my voice in this workspace. See, that's how it's supposed to sound. And what you're looking for is the little part of this audio that may contain something resembling that little speech defect and take it out. So that it can have a good example of how I speak. Pause in between sentences like you usually would. Use high energy recording equipment, drag and drop files, Listen to that little moment on drag and drop files. Equipment, drag and drop files. You see how it's drag and drop files. That sounds a little bit like how NVIDIA AI understood it. And AI, it doesn't mean it's a mind reader. It just means it's very intelligent. So whatever you give it, it's going to work with it. So you have to make sure that you give it the right thing. So actually, I'm just going to cut out this little part here. And then I'm just going to listen closely to the rest of it on my own. I don't want to bore you with it but I wanted you to listen to the level of detail for how to debug your own speech sample that you provided. Basically, what you want to do is not just create a speech sample randomly, but edit it in detail and go through a couple of iterations of truly mimicking your voice with NVIDIA AI, because once you have a good sample that it creates, it's gonna use that good version forever. But you have to do the work to help it identify exactly the voice and tonality that you're going for. And that's through a lot of editing and attention to detail on the voice that you provided. And once you've edited your voice sample, you give it to InVideo again, create another video with it and see, are you happy with it? If you are happy, then that's going to be the voice sample you're always going to be using. In this video, I want to show you the end result of how AI mimicked my voice, and it took me like five tries. So if you do it on your own, be patient, test your audio, because for most videos, especially of this style, audio is so, so, so important. And what I want you to listen for is how almost perfectly this current version of the video mimics my voice, and not only it does that, but it also mimics my pauses. It mimics my tonality and it's clear, and it enunciates everything, and there are no filler words. Let's listen together. In today's fast-paced and dynamic work environments, resilience has become a crucial skill for both individuals and teams to navigate challenges and thrive. But who plays a key role in fostering resilience among team members? The answer lies with managers. Managers play several specific roles in cultivating resilience within their teams. Let's explore some of these roles. 
Firstly, managers serve as active listeners. They create a safe... Let's pause here because this is enough of a 30 second sample. But you see, this is exactly how I talk when I try really hard to enunciate everything. So this is perhaps my best version of how I would talk. And again, it takes patience on your part to calibrate it. But this is a very good investment of time because then you're going to be able to use this forever now. Like I'm never going to create another voice sample again. I'm always going to use this voice version. And one little caveat, you might have heard a few little audio glitches, like some something like that. It's not part of my voice. It was part of the video. That's only because what's shown here is the low quality video. When you download it, it will be the high quality audio and video, so you won't have those little blemishes. That's in case you heard those little things. But in any case, now I have a perfect way to script things, and I have a perfect audio that it's able to create. And now I can create video very fast. Boom, 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 boom. This is the perfect place to be. This is where we want it to be in the very beginning. In this video, I wanna show you some additional options for the kinds of voices that you can use because let's say you have an accent like me and let's say you're kind of self-conscious about your accent. Whether you start that way or whether people comment about your accent, like in my case, people have negatively commented about my accent. I kind of have to move forward with it. I can't change my accent, but if you're creating videos and if your audience doesn't already know that you have an accent, you can actually create new videos with just about any voiceover. And in order to compare the results, we're gonna give this a script. And instead of saying, use Alex's voice, let's have it use a clear American voice. And it's gonna be a male, obviously, because that's me. And the script we're going to give it is an excerpt from a different video that I made AI do. So we're going to be able to compare how it made the video with my voice versus how it made the video with a more clear American accent. And I'm only going to give it a tiny excerpt from that larger video because that's going to be enough for us to just listen and compare. So let's click continue. And it's going to create this prompt for us. And we're going to say generate video. Obviously, we're going to wait until it analyzes things and prompts me for next things, which can kind of take like 30 seconds. So we'll fast forward to that moment. Then it asks me for a few additional details. We're just going to leave them as default and click continue. And when it generates the video, we'll fast forward to that moment. Okay, so let's listen to how this video came out. In this video, let's go over nine core practices for building resilience at work. Practice number one, cultivating a growth mindset. Embrace a growth mindset by viewing challenges as opportunities for growth. And this is a really nice accent. It sounds confident and amazing. Let's contrast that to how it mimics my accent. And of course, the problem is my accent. So let's listen to that version. In this video, let's go over nine core practices for building resilience at work. Practice number one, cultivating a growth mindset. You can probably already tell that the preset pure American accent is far superior. So if you don't have to stick with your original voice, I would recommend actually using a preset voice because that really sounds amazing and it will make your videos far more successful. Like if it's the same video pound for pound, the same exact footage, the same exact script, but the preset American accent voice versus my voice, the American accent would do far, far better. So that's a great option if you don't have to have your personal brand, if you are okay with sounding like it's a spokesperson creating a video, then that's the option to go with. And by the way, you have many options there. Because if you say script to video, and you're gonna pull down this pull down here, you can see you can have a clear American voice, I have a California accent, New York accent, and you can have different styles like British voice, young British voice, that's a kid, or middle age voice, or husky voice, or an Indian English voice, or Australian. So you can have any kind of accent you want. There are many options for you that are predefined. So you might wanna choose the accent that might resonate best with your audience. It's a really powerful feature here. Now I want to show you how to use in video 
to create a video for social media. This is like YouTube Shorts or a video for TikTok or Instagram. They have that vertical format and they're relatively short, under 60 seconds. So it's a different video format that you can use. These types of videos tend to get a lot of views. They can go viral. It's not a guarantee, obviously, but they have that ability to them. And once you're able to create videos like this, this will be a good addition to the existing videos that you can create in the horizontal formats that are a few minutes long. The TikTok style videos will be short videos. So that way, wherever you're posting videos, whether it's on traditional YouTube videos, whether it's YouTube shorts, whether it's on TikTok, on Instagram, on other platforms, you'll be able to create any kind of video. So let's go through the workflow for how to create such a video. So basically we're on our dashboard and you can say use AI video. And on the bottom of the screen, you'll see options. And it says here, YouTube shorts. You can use YouTube shorts, but it's also interesting to explore what are all the options. When you click on explore all, you can see you can make a YouTube explainer video. That's more of a traditional YouTube video. You can give it a script, it will make a video. You can create a YouTube short, you can create a TikTok video, Instagram reel, or even a recent events video. So there's a lot of stuff you can do, but let's do the YouTube shorts like we planned to. And let's give it the task. Usually these kinds of short videos, they're very clickbaity. And so that's the task I gave it. I asked it to make a video on three of the most underrated productivity hacks. The reason it's the most underrated, that's clickbaity, right? The person will want to know, oh, what is, what are those the most underrated? And instead of underrated, you can maybe say least known. So they're going to want to know, oh, I want to know that's least known. So I want to know, and I'm going to use my voice. Then I'm going to not use subtitles. Then I'm going to leave the subtitles as they are, and then use iStock normally. Let's leave that, click continue. It creates the prompt for you. We'll just leave that and we'll say create a video and let it work. Now it created the video. Let's watch it together just to see how it came out. Here are three lesser known productivity hacks to help you make the most of your time. Well, we don't need those productivity hacks. There are a million productivity hacks online, but you can see that the video is the kind of a format for shorts and TikTok. So it's perfect. You can export this and upload it everywhere you want. So right away, boom, you have a video that you can post. The only thing that I would caution is don't do it this way because I asked AI to come up with three productivity hacks. Now there are a thousand different productivity hacks, some of which you may prefer over others. AI cannot read your mind. So what you have to do is prompt it better, prompt it what those three productivity hacks should be. Don't make videos where you really have no idea whether the AI is going in the right direction or not, because again, it's not a mind reader. It's just smart. So the takeaway is yes, you can get the videos made, but the better you prepare, the better your prompt is, the more likely the video will come out as you had hoped rather than just leaving it up to chance. In this video, I want to give you a checklist for how to make sure that your videos always come out as best as they could be, and perhaps even the best in their categories, which is really our goal. So before you plow in to make any video and say, Hey, AI, make me this video about this topic. AI is very smart. It's not a mind reader. So it's going to try to understand what you want, but the more and better, and more detailed instructions you give it, the better. So before you plow in, a slightly better or largely better approach is to first research and think about what would make such a video good. Let's say you're making a video how to bake cake. What are the basic things that need to be covered? And what are the super insightful points that need to be covered? And what are the points that make you appear like a true expert rather than a novice making such a video. A true expert, a chef, a baker, would have real insight from their experience for, you know, this cake wants to be, it should, should be baked in this temperature. And if you want that kind of a flavor, you want to bake it at just one degree less or something that a super chef would only be able to know. And you want to get as close as possible to collecting those points because 
there's no guarantee that if you just ask AI, that it will do that. Because again, it's smart, but it's not a mind reader. So you collect the points. You can collect all the points with your experience through, by gaining your own work experience in that field and by consulting other people for advice and consulting ChatGPT for advice. That's totally fine. Just you want to get these perspectives of all these different people and tools so that you have the best points in your videos. Once you have the best points, you can make, you can ask ChatGPT to write a script for you, or you can just create a set of bullet points to get covered that are the super great points to make in that video. Then only you give it to NVIDIA AI because you see NVIDIA AI can make the script for you and you can edit the script. But what if you had in mind for like lemon cake, but it's going to start about start talking about strawberry cake. Well, again, you didn't give it the right instructions. You need to give it the kinds of instructions that you had thought up that would make the best possible video because AI, you know, AI, again, it, it doesn't have the same judgment as you do. It cannot. It's smart. It's not magic. And that's why the better you're planning, the better you're prompt, then you're going to get the script you want. You're going to get the video made for you. You don't have to appear in the video. You can use your voice. You can use a beautiful voice example. That's, you know, a preset example. And so you can have in the end, you'll end up with something really amazing. That's completely satisfactory. And it's going to perhaps be the best video in its class, but very likely, well, I should say that you increase the likelihood it by a tremendous amount. If you do all that pre work, you could just, you know, give it a whirl and see what it comes up randomly. But the more you put into the prompt and the points and the script to give AI, the better the video that it will make for you. It will still make the videos. You don't have to, don't have to appear in the video. Don't have to make the video. Don't have to edit the video, but the end result will come out better. You'll be prouder or you'll be very proud of the result. You'll be able to post it on your social media or wherever you use it. And it will be set up and have all the foundations for getting you the right results, which is really what you were hoping for. So that's how to lay the best foundation for how to create the best possible video. This concludes the course. As a reminder, to get more minutes of AI video created, please register through my affiliate link and use my coupon code during sign up to get more minutes of AI video. Thank you for watching and good luck with your video creation efforts.